Just Harvest is an anti-hunger and anti-poverty advocacy organization. Uh, so the issues that we're advocating on are um, almost always pertaining to um, the public safety net, the, the safety net of public programs like food stamps and welfare policy uh, that affect uh, low-income people's ability to, to get what they need um, uh, from our community. Um, Currently, the challenges that we face are enormous, both from the economic circumstances that the whole country is in um, and from the policy environment that we're in nationally and in the state of Pennsylvania um, with um, a real um, uh, full frontal assault on the lives of poor people in a lot of ways right now. And some of that assault is uh, people proposing bills that make it harder for folks to access safety net um, programs. For example, um, some of the things that uh, the wise people in Harrisburg think that to prevent fraud is to put pictures on uh, EBT cards, fingerprinting, drug testing, um, anything that they can think of to make it harder for folks to receive these benefits for those who are who are really in need of the benefits. Can you uh, tell me what some of the kind of actions that you're engaged in right now to raise awareness for these situations? Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you that we are actively uh, recruiting folks right now to go to Harrisburg and to speak their voice. And we're uh, working with some of our coalition partners across the county uh, to load up buses and go. And we're actively looking um, for folks to go. And we are engaging our client base and our membership base uh, to uh, get on the bus with other activists and uh, go make their voices heard in Harrisburg that uh, this idea of how to balance the budget on the backs of low-income folks is just not acceptable and they're going to collectively uh, make their voice heard. Um, some of the other things that we ask folks to do is uh, go to talk to their legislative members. Um, we can go with folks and we've done that or people have been so outraged after we've given them an, an alert about what is happening in Harrisburg and some of these bills I mentioned uh, that they are picking up the phone and voicing their concerns immediately right there on the spot and they're calling us and telling us exactly what these folks say. And it's great because they're holding their elected official accountable and saying, you represent me also. And a core part of our mission is to empower people in poverty to speak up for themselves, to demand their own uh, rights, to, to demand that public officials be accountable to them as well as to their big campaign donors. Uh, the, the, the struggle to do that is um, difficult and complicated and encouraging low-income people who often feel powerless to find the power of their own voices, um, whether it's with a legislator, whether it's with their own caseworker, um, to make sure that, they're, um, that the rules are being followed and that their, their application for food stamps is being processed the right way, um, is, a, um, uh, is all part of that empowerment process. Uh, so it, advocacy sort of lives at the dramatic public policy level where it's an act of Congress, but it also lives at that everyday level where people are just trying to interact with the bureaucracy, trying to get through the system and understand and, um, and be able to express themselves. Um, so we're, we're engaged in, in the entirety of that process. When we alerted uh, our recent um, uh, clients, the folks who call us for help in applying for food stamps, um, when we alerted them to these bills that are in the state legislature about um, uh, potential changes that will make it much more difficult to access those uh, safety net benefits, um, we had someone call us particularly about the fingerprinting bill and say, um, I'm not a criminal. I'm, I'm a, a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for us, that kind of experience that people are being put through really sums it up. We had a client recently who um, had tried it on her own to apply for food stamps. Um, and like happens for thousands of people month in and month out across the state, um, getting all the paperwork together, meeting all the requirements, uh, not the eligibility requirements, just the paperwork requirements, uh, was an enormous struggle. Uh, she got a letter at one point from her case, uh, from the, from the welfare department office, uh, telling her when her interview, uh, needed to be held. And the letter said four days ago. Uh, that's not an uncommon experience. Uh, she gave up at that point, but later heard about the work that we do helping people through that application process. And uh, thanks to our work is now receiving about $200 a month in food stamps. That process um, denies about 9,000 people every month in the state of Pennsylvania food stamps just for, just in the category of people who are rejected for failure to to require furnished information is what the state bureaucrats call it. Um, 
that's way more than people who get turned down because their incomes are too high. Uh, so helping people through that process, getting people um, like that particular client uh, to share that experience so that um, other people know that they're not alone, uh, again, is all part of the process of helping legislators, bureaucrats, uh, taxpayers, media opinion makers understand that that's what the day-to-day -day lives of people on public assistance is like. Well, food insecurity uh, is what the um, federal government used to actually call hunger, um, but for an assortment of technical reasons, no longer calls hunger. Uh, but it's, it's the difficulty that a family has keeping food on the table. Um, it's a fairly straightforward thing that the, um, that the federal government does a report on um, in a lot of bureaucrat years um, uh, once a year. And what we know is that right now in Allegheny County, much more uh, precisely than food insecurity numbers, we know that 157,000 people are receiving food stamps right now, this month. That's more than last month, and that was more than the month before, and so on and so on and so on for the last three and a half years. Uh, we also know that that number doesn't capture the thousands of people who try to apply and get turned down. We know it doesn't capture the people who are discouraged from applying in the first place. We know that it doesn't uh, count the people who are food insecure but um, don't even know that they might be eligible and haven't even tried to apply. In addition to advocacy on, on behalf of the poor and the hungry in our region, your organization also offers services in applying for food stamps and, and even tax preparation. Um, how's the response been to these services? Well, I can tell you that um, it's funny when I go out into the community and I talk about, you know, will you be able to help you with your food stamp application? Give us a call. We can help you. We can help you with this process. They will look and say, I think you guys did my taxes. Um, so that gives them a sense of comfort that if we handled your taxes, we definitely can handle uh, your food stamp application. And sometimes it's vice versa. Um, I can tell you that this place is just ringing with people when a tax season. It's exciting to see that all these folks that come in and we're on track to be 2,000 tax returns. Um, we actually, uh, mm -hmm. as we're just wrapping up the tax season now, um, we think that the total is around 2,250 people's tax returns uh, that we did here at our office on the south side uh, and at two other smaller pilot sites that we run. Uh, altogether, we're one of the largest free tax uh, assistance sites in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, we also uh, work with a number of smaller sites that are part of the coalition of providers that, um, uh, that we all work with to accomplish this together. The reason that we do that is because one of the nation's most effective tools in the toolbox to fight poverty is a program called the Earned Income Tax Credit that um, is um, part of the tax refund that low-income working folks get, um, and it depends on getting their taxes done uh, by getting them done free here and at other free sites. Uh, it protects them from predatory refund anticipation loans and from unnecessary fees in getting their taxes prepared. I was told a story, um, a woman, I was at an event not too long ago, and I was tabling about food stamps. And uh, when she found out we did tax preparation also, she said, how much, how much does that cost? I said, it's free as long as you meet certain income guidelines. And she said, what did you say? I said, free. And she instantly started tearing up. And she said, I just paid $700. And she was in our, our bracket. She could come here at Just Harvest or any of the other sites and be able to get those taxes and her local, state, and federal taxes done free of charge. Most of the commercial tax preparers charge by the form that you have to fill out. And wouldn't you know it, in order to show that you qualify for the earned income tax credit, there's an extra form to fill out. Uh, so every time they're um, uh, providing paid commercial services to people who need those particular benefits, they're making extra money. And that's the kind of thing that we're trying to protect people against. And tell me, if an individual needs help or if an individual wants to get involved in, uh, in your advocacy efforts, um, how can they get in touch with you? Sure, they could uh, give us a call. Um, our phone number is 412-431-8960. We're very proud that we're one of the few people that you call, you actually get a live voice. Uh, we pride ourselves well, on that. Almost all the time. All the time, unless you get a voicemail. <laughs> but uh, there's no prompting here. Um, but they also can visit us on the web at www.justharvest.org to learn more about our services. But I really encourage folks to give us a call because again, we need many voices that we can get together. We go to Harrisburg, we go to DC, 
And a lot of times it's me and a few other advocates and, and Ken and a few other advocates that are, are trying to make a difference in, in uh, to get rid of bad policy or promote good policy um, on behalf of low-income people. And we're up against a lot, and not just attitude and culture, but we're also against uh, people who have lobbyists and they uh, get more attention than we do sometimes. But if we collectively all together and we're the people that vote, we can uh, raise our voice to the point where they have to listen to us. You can also help even without calling us. The people who pick up the phone and call their legislator, people who talk to their neighbors, talk at their place of worship or their school or their community organization about these problems start to get involved, whether it's with us or, or in lots of different ways in the fight against hunger and poverty. Uh, everybody's part of the solution and uh, we certainly encourage you to call us, get involved, uh, donate, um, participate in our advocacy work, uh, friend us on Facebook, uh, uh, follow us in, in other social media, uh, look at our website, learn about the hunger problem, um, but what you do on your own is equally important as, as what you do as part of our organization's work. And be an educated voter. <laughs>